This is module one, lesson four, distributive property. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the distributive property to evaluate expressions and use the distributive property to simplify expressions. Let's learn distributive property with numerical expressions. The expressions three times the quantity four plus two and three times four plus three times two are equivalent expressions because they have the same value of 18. This concept here shows the distributive property which combines addition and multiplication. So multiplying a number by a sum of numbers is the same as doing each multiplication separately and then adding their products. So our key concept here is the distributive property. If we're given numbers, multiplying after you add is the same as multiplying both things first and then adding. So let's look down at our numerical examples. Down here, we have four times nine plus three, and then it's shown as four times nine plus four times three. If we add first, we get 12. Then we get four times 12 is 48. Or if we had multiplied first, so each of those things was multiplied by four, we would get 36 plus 12, which is also still 48. So adding the numbers first, works or multiplying each of the numbers first works. If you're choosing you want to multiply, you may have seen this method in the past where you are making kind of rainbows to show you're multiplying to each number. The same works with subtraction, just be careful. If we subtract first, eight minus two, we get six, then multiply by five, we get 30. Or if we were to multiply each of the numbers by five, then subtract, we'd end up with 40 minus 10, which is still 30. We're going to skip ahead to example two, mental math. Use the distributive property to rewrite and evaluate each expression. First one, we have five times 99. Doing this regularly without any tricks might be a little difficult, so let's use the distributive property to help us mentally do it. We're given five times 99, but if we rewrite it as five times 100 minus 1, which 99 and 100 minus 1 are the same, now we can use the distributive property to multiply before we subtract. 5 times 100, 500. Minus 5 times 1 is 5. So now we can subtract 500 minus 5 is 495. So this multiplication was made simpler by using the distributive property and creating an equal expression. Now let's look at part B, four times 1,002. So 1,002 is really just 1,000 plus two. Now again, we can use our distributive property. Four times 1,000 is 4,000. Four times two is eight. So together, adding, we would get 4,008. The distributive property helps make these mental calculations a little bit simpler. Check your understanding. Pause the video now and complete both parts. In part A, estimate how you would get seven times 51. An estimation is not an exact answer. And then in part B, which expressions use the distributive property? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First, seven times 51 is approximately seven times 50. So seven times 51 is gonna be a little bit more than that. So a little bit more than 350 when we multiplied seven times 50. For which expressions are we using the distributive property? Going through here, if we're looking, we need seven times 51. So the first one, 51 times, this is not seven anymore, that's four. In B, we have seven times 50 plus one. 50 plus one is 51, split apart, that one works. C, we have 51, which is fine, but not seven plus three, we don't want that. 51 times seven minus 51 times three. Again, we don't wanna split apart the seven, we wanna split apart the 51. E, seven times 50 plus seven times one. They just took the 50 and the one and multiplied first. So E works. And then finally, we're not splitting apart with 51 and seven and three. So B and E are our only choices. Let's learn distributive property with algebraic expressions. First, a couple of vocabulary that you're gonna to need to know. 
the coefficient is the numerical factor of a term. So if there's a number in front of a variable, that is called a coefficient. So if you had, say, 3x, 3 is your coefficient. Like terms are terms with the same variables. And if they're the same variable, they also have to have the same exponent. So just because you see an x, please be careful. They have to be x with the same exponent. Okay, A regular x is actually a different term than an x to the second power. An expression is in simplest form when it's replaced by an equivalent expression with no like terms or parentheses. So as you're going through stuff, if you see something with parentheses, it's not as simple as it should be. We need to fix it. If you see things with more than one of the same variable, so more than one like term, we also need to fix that. So the distributive property and the other properties of equality that we've used so far can be used to show that 6x plus 2x equals 8x. In this expression, 6x plus 2x, in this expression, 6x and 2x are like terms. So they both have the same variable here. We can use the distributive property to take out the x because both things were multiplied by the x. Now, here they wrote it at the end instead of out front. It means the same thing. Then we learned back the substitution property means you can replace anything with its equal. So they replaced 6 plus 2 with 8 because they are equal. So 6x plus 2x equals 8x. So these expressions are called equivalent expressions because they represent the same value. Now, as we're going through these, as long as you realize that all we did was combine or add or subtract the coefficients here we added to get a new coefficient, then you can combine like terms. Notice the variable did not change, just the coefficient did. Example three, distribute an algebraic expression from the left. Rewrite four times five x minus seven using the distributive property, then simplify. So here, this is a traditional distribution problem where out front we have a factor of four that we're gonna multiply by. So just like we did with the numerical expressions, we're gonna multiply first, then in this case, subtract. So four times five is 20. Notice it had an x, it still has an x. The variable did not change, just the coefficient. And then four times seven is 28, and we were showing that we're subtracting, so we're gonna stay subtracting. Check your understanding. Simplify the expression negative 6 times the quantity r plus 3g minus t. Choose the best answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. Let's go through and figure out which one it should be. So distributing out, we're going to have negative 6 times r. There's really a hidden one here if you need it. Plus negative 6 times 3 with a g minus negative six times t. So going through negative six times one r is just gonna be negative six r plus negative six times three is 18 with the g and then minus negative six times one, which is negative six t. If we check our answers, we know at least the first one's negative 6, so A is negative 6, B is negative 6, C and D are not, so it can't be those. But if we look at our next, it's down to a single symbol. So we need to figure out which things go where. So we're adding negative 6. So subtraction and a negative kind of mean the same thing. They're the same symbol. So one negative or one subtraction takes over as subtraction. If there's two negatives or two subtractions, they cancel each other out and it makes a positive. So we're looking for minus and then plus, which is a minus plus. Example four, distribute an algebraic expression from the right. Rewrite the quantity three y squared plus y minus eight times six using the distributive property, then simplify. So all this means Remember, there's a hidden multiplication in between a number and parentheses. So this is multiplying. We're just going from the right side now. 
to the left. So if you notice what they did, 3 times y squared, they just took the number outside and multiplied it by what's inside. Same as we've been doing just from the other side. 6 times y, 6 times negative 8. Just like we did before, now we can multiply out. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times y is 6y. And 6 times negative 8 is negative 48. And then we had plus a negative which the minus takes over, so minus 48. Okay, again, doesn't matter what side this number is on. If it's connected to the parentheses, you are multiplying. Example five, combine like terms. Simplify each expression. In the learn section, we learned that combine like terms are terms that have the same variable and along with the same variable have to have the same exponent. And we also saw in their example that we just really need to combine the coefficients and leave the variable alone. So here, what they do is they take out the variable. So notice 14a plus 18a both have an a in common. Once they remove the a, we end up with 14 plus 18. If we were to distribute it back out, this is just like we did in the last example, it would be a times 14, a times 18, which would bring us back to where we started. Now we can use substitution and replace anything for its equal. So 14 plus 18 is equal to 32. So after we combine like terms, we end up with 32a. Again, they draw it out a little more than you have to. Find the ones that have the same variables and add or subtract their coefficients. Part b, we have 4b to the second power plus 9b minus 3b. Here, if we're following the same thing in A, we have two things that have just a B. Over here, it has an exponent of two, which makes it different. It is not a like term with the others. So if we remove the B from the nine B and the minus three B, we end up with nine minus three. Then again, substituting, we end up with a final simplified expression of four B squared plus six B. Continuing to repeat myself, if you just do positive nine minus three, you end up with positive six. They were both a B term, so make sure it stays a B term. Check your understanding. Simplify the expression B squared plus 13B plus 13. If it's not possible to simplify it anymore, choose simplified. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. When we're simplifying, we need to make sure of two things. One, that there are no parentheses, and two, that there are no like terms. This expression does not have parentheses, so we're good there. We need to check if there are any like terms. So b squared, it's really one b squared, but are there any other b to the second power terms? So this one is just a regular b, not a b2. This one doesn't have a b at all, so that one's good. There's nothing alike. 13b, this is just a regular b all by itself. We already said that b2 wasn't alike. This one doesn't have a b, so that one's by itself. And then last, we have a constant with no variable. There's no other constants. So all of our terms do not have a like term to combine it with. So the answer, it is d, already simplified. Example six, write and simplify expressions. This has two parts. So part A, complete the table to write an algebraic expression for three times the sum of two X and three Y decreased by twice the difference of four X and Y. That was a mouthful. Let's break this down. So three times the sum of two X and three Y. So if we were to write that out, we would see sum of first, that tells us that that part's in parentheses, times is multiplication, and then three is our number. So as it's written there, decreased by means subtraction. And then twice, which is a two, the difference of, which is again gonna indicate parentheses. So twice the difference of four X minus Y. And twice not only means two, it means two times. Now in part B, we have our expression here. I just took it out of the table and rewrote it. So first, let's just distribute out. So three times two X, three times three Y. 
3 times 2x plus 3 times 3y. When we do that, we get 6 with the x and 3 times 3 is 9 with the y. For the next one, we have minus 2 times 4x. So minus 2 times 4x and minus 2 times minus y. Minus 2 times minus y. Careful with the subtraction in the middle. Make sure you treat it as if it's a negative. So negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. And then negative 2 times negative 1, y, is positive 2. So we end up with the negative or subtraction there and a positive there. Now, using the commutative property of addition, where we can rearrange things that are added or subtracted, as long as you keep the sign with it, we can put our x terms together. So we had 6x minus 8x. 6x minus 8x. So using what we knew about the distributive property, we would end up with 6 minus 8 for x. And then we also can put our y's together. So 9 plus 2 are y's. Simplifying by substituting, we would have negative 2x and 11y. So now we're in our most simplified version because we don't have any parentheses and we no longer have any like terms that we need to combine. Check your understanding of the distributive property, equivalent expressions, and writing an expression from a verbal expression. Write the expressions listed in the appropriate box. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, we need to write out the expression. So it's four times the sum of two times x and six. We know it's a plus because it says sum. Two times x is right here, two times x and six. Now, which of these are equivalent? If we were to go through, my suggestion for you would be to distribute this out. So we at least have one more equal expression, eight x plus 24. Now we have another thing to compare it to. So first one, eight times the quantity x minus three. This is not equivalent because of that subtraction sign. We'd end up with eight x minus 24, not plus 24. The next one is equivalent. That's actually what we wrote out in the first place. Next one, this is not equivalent. If we were to multiply out the six, we would end up with 24 plus 12 X. So 12 X, not eight X. The next one is also not equivalent. We would end up with eight plus four X plus 24, which then we would have to combine the eight and the 24. We would get 32, not 24. So that's not equivalent. 8x plus 24 is what we got when we multiplied it out. And then the last one, 4 times 2x plus 4 times 6. This is just shown, written out as the distributive property. So that is equivalent.